The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Zomethius Rising. You know me as the VOR, the voice of reason. Or the Zo What Morning Show. Back in the building, 323 965 1600. Got another crazy show on deck. I'm telling you right now, call us because this show is going to be crazy. We got an incredible collection, collage of guests in the building, will. right? If you will, collage. Uh, and I won't say who they are right now. You know how I do this. I like to go through my book selections first. But damn it, I'm happy to see my homeboy. He's in the building right now. I ain't going to tell you who he is. But you better get to your phone lines because we going to cut straight up. Before the books go, let me do this. Jeff Brown is in the building. Welcome back to the show, Jeff Brown. Comedian. What's going on, Playboy? Glad to have you back. Be, be, I know you're going to be uh, irritating and intellectual absolutely. and as funny as... <laughs> Yeah, as you always are. I appreciate Thank you, you so much. God bless you so much. 2013, yes. He's never been late. 2013, we really appreciate that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> and also in the building, world-renowned, famous even, Jesus. He's an expert in a bunch of stuff. Doctor, psychiatrist, uh, philosopher, psychologist, DJ. DJ, white man, Jew. All of these things come together to form Dr. Mark Goulston. Welcome back to the show, my good friend. I can hardly wait to find out what I say today. <laughs> you can't wait to find out what you're going to say today. <laughs> oh, wow. This is going to be excellent. This is going to be excellent. And I'm not going to introduce the, the other two people in the room right now, but it's going to be crazy. Let's do this really quickly. Book selections. And you know what I would like? I would like somebody, some fan, somebody out there to, you know, create like a little blog of all of the books I put together because I know I'm well into the, well, we're at least... What? A hundred books so far? About to say, about 100, 50, 60 books. at least. 50, 60. Let's find out what these books are. Somebody call me at 323-965-1600. read them all. You read them all? Oh, absolutely. My sweet Lord. Absolutely. Now, uh, <clears throat> this guy that I'm about to introduce here who wrote this book, he was on my show, and I thought he was incredible. I think this, well, no, it wasn't a show that me and uh, my friend did, but... Uh, it was one of those shows over at the Foxhole. Incredible book. Twelve Smart Things to Do When the Booze and Drugs Are Gone. What? Right? Choosing Emotional Sobriety Through Self-Awareness and Right Action by Alan Berger, Ph.D. This dude was incredible on The Voice of Reason. He gave me these books, and I read them all. They're small. It's not like, what is this going to take me, 10 minutes to read? Come on. Yeah, and uh, the doc wants to Let judge. Him. Let me see. Let me be the judge. Only a white man can validate another white man. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, his Hand next me book. that book, Chickaboo. What are you doing <laughs> reading anyway? Reading is new to your kind. Hand it over. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's do this. His second book, 12 Things That Messes Up Recovery. Because we did a show about recovering. You know, about... 
you know, if you got a drug addict in your life and, mm. you know, how do you how do you approach them? How do you do the intervention? It was an intervention show. And this guy came on. It was crazy. Twelve things that messes up recovery, avoiding relapse through self-awareness and right action. Alan Berger, Ph.D. Go get the book. Go do it right now. I'm just telling you, just helping a friend out. You want to you want to thumb through this, Whitey Locks? Just hand it over to Whitey Locks. OK. Unfaithful. Hope and healing after infidelity. How many of you have gone through this? Mm. This is heavy. Everybody's getting cheated on. I keep trying to tell people that relationship is not a place you should go to where you think you're going to be able to hide from your problems. It's mm. just a place that's going to accentuate your current uh, neurosis. Whatever foolish script you got running in your brain, the relationship is a physical manifestation of that. This book goes into that into depth. Great book. Okay, let's continue to promote his riches. He's already rich. Just Listen by Dr. Mark Goulston. Please, <laughs> please, please go support our good friend, Dr. Mark Goulston. This is an incredible book. Of course, it's the number one bestseller. You got to get involved. But this isn't his newest book. <coughs> this is Real Influence. Please go support Dr. Mark Goulston. He's all over the place. I don't want to say what he's doing because he told me it would be in violation of his contract. That's how big he is. You know, just visiting with the Negroes in the hood, <laughs> you know, sharing our space and time. We appreciate having white Jesus with us today. 323-965-1600 is the number to dial. Please call us and let us know what's cracking. Here's another book. This lady just sent this to me in the mail, asked me to read it. I read some of it and got pissed. We're going to talk about this today. Black men versus white men. The black woman's choice. Is she telling sisters to jump ship? Because niggas ain't shit. I don't know. Damn it. What can we do? 323-965-1600. Somebody call us and let us know what's cracking immediately. A lot of people keep asking for this. This is my book. If you want to get it, we're putting up a website right now. So Jump you got, ship with your monkey asses? <coughs> one more time. Jump ship with your monkey asses? Is that That's not the name of my book, though. Oh, all right. <laughs> my book is The Rebirth of Seeds. You can get it. I mean, we're putting up a website. I mean, my, my publicist is in the building right now. I'm claiming her. She's in the building right now. So uh, this will be available on my website, I'm sure. But if you really want a copy, just follow me on Facebook. And, you know, I'm a real dude. Send me a postal money order. I'll send it to you autograph right here, right now. The Rebirth of Seeds, Zoe Williams. Oh, God, who's going through this? This is going to tie into our damn conversation today, too. Are you a crazy baby mama? <sighs> a Handbook for Single Mothers by Melanie Bent and Max Lane. Is she promoting crazy, crazy baby mama ism? That book is awful thin. Yeah, it should be the size of what the Magna Carta. Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. War and Peace. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know, but check this book out. And let me do this. My final two books. The cover isn't on this one. Oh! my God. However, this is a heater, I and you. I would suggest that the doc read this book. Seeing that he has a Wizard of Oz kind of seat, right? He's the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. He's sitting behind the curtain. He's here with black folk learning all of our dirty secrets. Well, maybe he should learn something about our culture. And, 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 and no, secrets. but listen to this. One of the most powerful cultures on planet Earth is hip hop. Absolutely. Doc needs to be schooled in the ways of hip hop. And who better to teach the doc than the blastmaster? Than KRS One, right? His book Ruminations, an incredible book. I mean, it talks about culture, <coughs> uh, society, hip hop, music, its origins, the whole nine yards. Go get Ruminations. I'm gonna steal that. KRS One. One. KRS One. What is? What does it stand for? KRS. Knowledge reigns supreme over, over nearly, nearly everyone. everyone. KRS One. What a rapper's name today, Lil Wayne. Are we going to talk about the endangered black man today? They don't want none. Oh they don't God, want none. is it a case of scarcity? Are we lacking good black men? Are there more good black women? 
than there are good black men. I beg to differ. I'm going to put that in my bag. Somebody call me, 323-965-1600. And here's the last book of my book selection. Then we're going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to reintroduce everyone. This book is awesome. And it's got a CD in the back, the whole get down. Anyway, I'm sorry. This book is fly, though. A mindfulness-based stress reduction book. And it mm. includes three MP3 CDs. It's incredible. Uh, it's by Bob Stahl, Ph.D., and Elisha Goldston. No relation to Mark Goldston. This is Goldstein, Ph.D. Okay? No relation. However, excellent book. I read it. I made my son read it. Because, you know, he's a temperamental guy out on the basketball court. I'm saying, hey, redirect that inner, that anger. Put it in the game. Direct it into your game. Yes. The referee is like your mother. Once she makes a call, you can't argue it. They're not going to change it. Oh, that's deep. That's a jewel. 323-965-1600. We'll be back at 2.2. Zo What Morning Show in the building. Guest coming. I'll see you in a second. Then I have a... Ladies and gentlemen, so what? Back in the building. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams. And also, I got the new iPhone. I call it a triphone. I hate it. Um, That'll change. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, too. I'm there, too. Zoser Williams, at Z-O-S-E-R-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S -L -L -I -I on Instagram. Zoser Williams. Back in the building. Ah. <sighs> Now it's time to introduce some of my guests. As a matter of fact, come on in. Just, just come on in and walk through. It doesn't matter. I mean, this guy does it all the time. Who? You remember how you used to just break through the? Oh, she. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was uh, that was in the past. Your beeper's going off. Yeah. You just used to just walk through. Yeah. We'd be having a show and hey, how y'all doing? Who has said? <laughs> Well, come on. You know, just bust through. <laughs> come up here with me. But I'm you glad can you see the future early. from here. I'm glad you're here early. I, I really appreciate it. But okay. let me introduce this young lady who was brought to my attention. I mean, it's an interesting young lady. This is like name two foods that don't go together but might taste good. Uh, peanut butter and mayonnaise. 
Now that's disgusting. <laughs> you said they don't. I they, they said might taste good together. Yeah, it might taste good. Oh, I happen to know jelly and bologna is off the rate. Okay, oh okay. God. So we will not ask this caveman food specialist. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, this young lady is, is strange. 25 years old, yet still a virgin. There is still a seal. Never had it trounced. Never. And she's a, as if that isn't enough. That's beautiful. She's a black woman, 25, virgin, and a relationship expert. <laughs> How does all of this come okay, back together? Up. Back up. How can you be an expert at anything at 25? Yeah. Back up. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Anyway, we want to welcome her to the show. Get a good look at Ashley Brown 100. You can follow her on YouTube at Ashley Brown 100. What She's up, there. what up, what up? Thanks for having me here, guys. She is she sexy. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Thank you. Now, she. Well, I'm going to put some of her business out. To have not had sex. She, she has a sexy. boyfriend. I have and, a boyfriend. And I tell her that the... the How old is he? He's 31. So she's going to give up the nookie sooner than she thinks. It's coming. How long have you been with him? Four months. Okay. Yeah, it's right yeah. round yeah. the corner. Yeah, before the 4th of July. Before the 4th of July? Well, the 4th of July. All right. You, 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 it's going to be some fireworks. Be glazed over. Fireworks. Fireworks. <laughs> and he 31, too. Good for you. You starting out with a grown-ass man. Exactly. Good for you. Don't you start with you don't kids, want no boys putting no dents in your cherry. You Not. want this dude. Just... A boy putting what? Dents in her cherry. She wants somebody going to go, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> start out, you know, just start out with crack. Don't smoke weed. Don't just, just go start, straight, straight to it. Straight to, straight to it. Straight there to the main vein. So let's know. do this right now. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, he's a legend. I'm not even going to say his name. Just put the camera on him. Welcome to the show. The big homie is in the building right now. This the is going to shock everybody right now. Just take a look at who's on the show with us right now. Can we get the camera on? Can we get on? the camera on? They're hilarious. Do we have yeah. any camera? Let's just turn this one around. The one that's pointing at Zoe. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just looking up here. And I don't hey, see Zoe. How you doing? Oh, what up, Lewis Dix? How are you? It's good to Lou be here. Lou Dix in well, the building. It's, it's okay to be here. I wouldn't say it's good to be here. Ah, <laughs> uh, here okay. we go. <laughs> I can't believe the way you guys just... Talked to the woman and went right to below the waist. I just don't understand. That's why. That's the we're reason here. she's on the show, Lewis. I, now, I mean, you didn't even say hello and ask her anything above the neck. Everything no, is, because she's here because she's a virgin. And Lewis. you all wonder what's wrong with the man today. I like. Yeah, he yes. wrote me down and then, in a matter of like two seconds. And then, I love it. I'm not, now, see, I didn't say put you down. No, you. Okay, no. wait a minute. No, can I finish? It? Wait a minute before we start the fight. Can I finish? <laughs> The intro. We have one more gentleman on the show that I have to introduce. Yeah, the, the, yeah. And then you have four white Jewish jokes, which Absolutely. you wonder what's wrong with the. Everything is belittling yes. a male. Yeah. And if Why this not? Jewish man was somewhere around his Jewish friends, those jokes wouldn't fly. But here, but he's not. He's but here. That's what I'm saying. But here, everything. <laughs> if your is, aunt had balls, she'd be your uncle. Is, everything <laughs> is below the way. I mean, okay, it's, so can it's we so introduce pitiful. our final Go ahead. guest? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just Lewis. Sad. I but, love the fact that this Lewis is, is going to be water and hot grease today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, another incredible writer, comedian, and good brother, James Hanna. Hanna dog. Toothpaste <laughs> is on the phone right now. What up, James? What's up? Hey, what up, y'all? What up, Jeff? Hannah Dog. What up, up Zoe? Hey, man, I'm good, man. Welcome what to the show. Doing? Hey, how you doing, James? Hannah, funny All stuff right. on Facebook. I had to I'm apologize. I had to address Jeff first. We were both in each other's wedding, so yeah, that's, that's my nigga. And you, and you see how that, right and you see how that worked okay. out. That's, that's, <laughs> my, that's my nigga right there. Oh, oh my God! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Hannah! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait. I just uh, there's a torpedo in the water. Did you just? Uh... <laughs> I'm just wow. saying you two are just like you talking about grease and water. You two. Are <laughs> oh no no! I mean no, in a very funny way, not in a negative way. No, See, yeah, everything yeah. is. Everyone thinks whenever you say something, it's negative. It's no, in a very you said funny look way. how that turned out. I thought you was talking about my wedding. No. no. Oh okay. Yes. No, oh, because it did turn out. Did it turn out bad? Did, did, no, my my what my last one. My last one was wonderful. It was the first two that was fucking horrible. Okay, because oh. which one? was he at huh? the, Which second one? One? the second one the second, second one. one okay okay well good there it is so let's get into the topic black wait, wait, i want to go after the virgin relationship expert oh go ahead <laughs> go ahead go ahead james here we go okay. yes i am in the building now. ashley brown live and active only a woman can take active. a position she ain't qualified for 
and other women listen to it. Ooh. That's some bullshit. Wow. Ooh. How do you listen to that for you a virgin? Ka-ka-ka. That is a good 25. question. I didn't hear. You ain't even lived yet. K- uh, Hannah, ask the, ask the Hannah, ask the question again. Ask the question, question again. Uh, how are you a relationship? Relationship version, a relationship expert, a relationship and a virgin, virgin. And a virgin. And 25. And 25. Because I don't have sex doesn't mean I don't know stuff about relationships. Go deeper. Dude, you don't, baby, hold on. You don't know shit about relationships because you ain't had sex. Ooh. You so that? you're basically saying right sex is the only you, thing that's in baby, the relationship then or the most important baby. thing in the relationship? Because there's other the factors in the relationship besides sex, correct? So you can't even give a man what's most important. You understand that that 31-year-old dude, if you walked in your house right now, that 31-year-old dude was in bed with another woman, you can't even use the phrase he's fucking somebody else? Oh. Ooh. 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 I can say that. He's just Ooh. fucking yeah. her. Huh? You can't even say... You can't even say he's fucking somebody else. Because he's only fucking her. Because he ain't fucking you. Wow. Just because he's not fucking me doesn't mean that he's not doing other things to me. No, so. he wants cooter. No, 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 baby. Don't, don't play semantics. Don't play semantics. Uh, okay, okay, James Hanna. James no, Hanna. Go ahead. This is Zoe. I, I already... His gun is not jammed. He it is, is not. He's firing. <laughs> I right. let the screen go. Is someone like, projecting or I something? Like I don't women. know. Y'all, y'all, y'all support each other in dumb shit. It's like, how will you relate? You, you just make up the title. See, men, we don't, yeah, we we don't do listen that. to men who don't know what they're talking about in our area. Mm, you know, but, but the subject of manhood we get no we don't listen to bitch niggas for male advice ooh. no we don't wow no. but let's do this so how let's are we do this a woman who ain't, you Jeff, ain't even you ain't I mean, even said don't come to me yet how do you that's, that's james, shit. james 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 okay? james no i'm not james I, see, 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 james, james. My wait hold on james james, james. What? just let's let's all take Let's take a five breather. Seconds. Let's take a let's and let me breathe. set up this topic, please, because <laughs> okay, we on right, fire right, right now. So, so just give me so, the, just give me okay. five so, seconds hold on, hold and just hold on, give let me, me make this clear. Okay, make it. I'm clear. not woman bashing. I just don't like the the, the just the, the fact that women can just self self title themselves a relationship expert. You ain't even been to your high school reunion yet. This is true. Not, I mean, wow. You, cause right, these are good points. Reunion is the reality check of where you are as a woman. Ooh, these are good points. And you haven't even had that yet. And are you here to give when me my reality check or, or what? Kind of, sort of. He's, damn, he's like, like, it's about a, it's 137 to know right, right so now. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. And then I'm going to come back and try to start this show again. <laughs> All I'm right. With it, so I'm going to have to that was, that was just, that was, <laughs> We'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> Oh, he no. was project.
Okay. Uh, all right. I think we've all had a time out. And now hey. we're back. But I do think some great points were brought up during the break. I'm just here to make pools out of balloons. I'm no longer. <laughs> this is going wow. to be an incredible okay. show. We always destroy women on this show. We talk about women being in control. I've said this before. I said women need to be more accountable for the terrible experiences that they have in relationships. Uh, I say women are the directors of their relationships and writers. They write the script. Men, we conform to the script. Uh, we put a lot of pressure on women. I say women are the most intelligent of the species, human humanity, right? I say all of these things. But what we don't do, we don't get on the men enough. And that's what this show is about. Is there... A shortage of good men. What is the definition of a good man? What are negative male character flaws that infiltrate our relationships and break them down and erode them? That's the purpose of the show. Especially, listen, if America is sick, you've heard this old euphemism. If America is sick, the African-American community must be on its deathbed, right? <laughs> because whenever something bad happens to our culture and our society, we typically take it on the chin before any other culture does. So my question is, if we're looking at the divorce rate, high 50s, you know, low, you know, high 40s, right? And if you add in the legal separation, it goes into the 50s. If you're looking at sexless marriages, 27 to 40 million people in America are coexisting in a sexless marriage. If we're looking at the state of relationship in America, what does that mean for the black man? Is, is it time for the black woman to just say, you know what? Asians, Latinos, Whitey Locks, you guys are on deck this time because my dude is so lost and so gone that there's nothing else for me to choose from, especially not from him. He's in prison. He's not in school. He's not in corporate America. What is going on? Is the black alpha male extinct? 323-965-1600. That is the number to dial. James Hanna, welcome back, my good friend. All right. What's up? <laughs> all right. You all right, James? You all right, James? I just had to get some order real quick because we went off. <laughs> Take some heroin, okay. James. Take okay, some heroin. Who the fuck was that to check me on the phone? That was, that was, that was a poetess. Hey, here, here, here. Hannah, Hannah. I'm, I'm Hannah's <laughs> only real friend in this room. We no, have... I'm his friend. I no. like James Hannah. No, no, He's been no, on no, The Voice of no, Reason. No, no. Uh, me and Hannah, that, like, that's my dude. Right. Okay, can Hannah get your rent money? He can call me and get my rent money. That's my boy. Dude. Uh, can, to, oh, he was right. asking if he can get my rent money. Yes, could he get oh, your? Okay. Would you send him your rent money? No, I'm no, send him my rent money. Okay. Dude, right. take some heroin. Take some heroin, <laughs> and I'm telling you why. Because you have some very valid, dead ass on point Absolutely. things to say, and if you say them too loud, people freak out. I don't know why. I think the, you can <laughs> well, adjust no, the volume in your headphones. I don't think it's the vocif. I don't think it's the. I don't think it's the vociferation. Say it's, say it's sugary, James. Act, just, just, just make it nice and sweet. Right. Put it in seeds See, candy boxes. Me, no, y'all should have told me that. No, 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 James. Fuck, uh -huh. fuck Jeff Brown. <laughs> fuck what he just said. That's not how I get down. Okay. You can do what you want to do, just long as it's on topic. Okay. That's okay. where we yes. at. Leave the elephant right. alone. So what Jeff just said was some, yes. was some Ignore bullshit. Ignore me. Ignore me. Yes. Just okay. don't 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 fuck with the elephant in the room. Don't okay. uh, leave the <laughs> obvious alone. All right. Okay. That was okay. That was like So you're good. That was like the wounded that was like the wounded zebra walking past a lion. That that Exactly. That particular, so, okay. so let me go to I Doc. mean, I, I do think it's awesome she's a virgin, but I I'll just leave it at that. There you go. She is, know, it is awesome that she's a virgin. Let me Thank just you. applaud that. Thank you. I hope my daughter is a virgin at 25, <laughs> holding out, waiting for the perfect guy. Big question. Do but you does the dad? perfect... Do I have a dad? No, no, not, not have one. I mean, your relationship. Do you have like a... My dad actually passed away, but I did have a relationship with him before he passed That's away. Fantastic. But I do have older brothers who act like a father figure fantastic. in my life. Fantastic. So, ah. yes. Well, that's good. That's awesome. You're an inspiration in that department. <laughs> You're an inspiration in that department. <laughs> you know, so, thank you. Let me go to the doc real quick. Doc, why is it that men, or before I even go there, let's go to some of the character flaws that men bring to relationships that ultimately erode the relationship. What are, like, 
two or three really problematic mindset or masculine mindsets that men bring to the table that can ultimately break down a relationship? I think a lot of men, manly, manly men, are momentum players. So what happens is when they get their adrenaline triggered and they feel powerful, they like momentum. And any time a woman says no, hmm. any time a woman puts a condition on something, men, uh, at least the ones who are most sort of adrenaline, testosterone junkies, the, the more they take it as an assault. An affront to them as a person. An affront to them. And what happens is, is uh, you know, if you're... If you act in a way in which you're demanding respect, you will lose respect from other people. You have to command respect in the way you Absolutely. the way you behave. So not go to it. go to the difference between demanding and commanding. Go to the difference. Um, a demanding respect is, is you you act like an idiot. You're like I'm entitled to this. Well, you have to earn respect. So and entitlement so you, is associated with demanding. Yeah, yeah, I'm entitled to this. I, entitlement is uh, entitled is a different than being deserving. Ah, uh, you know, it's, uh, a, it's a, you know, I'm I'm sort of a shrink, and I make this distinction between uh, people with real personality problems act more entitled that, uh, than they deserve. They act more entitled to things that they don't deserve, and the neurotic, mm. insecure people actually mm. don't feel they deserve what they're entitled to. Ooh. Right, that's good. Ooh, that's great. That's, that's good. great. That's great. James Hanna, you're on. Talk to me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, James, I want, James, I want to tell you something, okay, because uh, we said uh, this in another show. This is the doc. Um, uh, I think you have something to say. So when you uh, have something to say and you, and, you, <laughs> and you start screaming, you distract because you trigger flashbacks in people's minds of people who are idiots who had nothing to say. So you don't want to have people look at you the way they look at people who had nothing to say. And uh -huh. uh, you, you don't want to distract from it. Uh, uh, people have nothing <laughs> People have nothing to say. I say scream and see who you can, uh, you know, sell your BS to because you're not worth anything else. But you have something to say, so you might want to uh, tee it up differently. Okay, oh, wow. I get that all the time. You know, I, I, I'll hear that out. I get that all the time. My mama tells okay. me that. <laughs> I love uh, it. I love it. So, talk to me about some of the character flaws of black men and how we bring certain mental attitudes and dispositions to our relationships that ultimately corrode them. Talk to me. Well, it's the problem is is that y'all go. I, I probably only a couple y'all gonna agree with me. Men, men do what we, basically in relationships we do what women let us get away with. Ooh. I agree. You know, it, it's just you know women want us to be good, but they don't fuck good dudes. So how we know how to be good? Ain't no ain't no reward in it. Wow. wow. You know, it's not men have this nothing that benefits a young man under the age of thirty to be good to a woman. Nothing. Go deeper. Go expand on that. Uh, that's how you get to go deeper. Is you be mean. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, she's screaming deeper, deeper because you they like assholes. Is that true? By the time they, if wait, if by there's the time some ladies out there, man, they too fat and out of shape for a man to give a damn. Ooh, we. So, just, so are you, know, you saying? They, if they let me like good dudes when they were hot and everything. Then we would act right. Men become basically my 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 view is is I always believe that men become what women fuck. What you know? It's like there's no reward in being good. Wow. You know, you can women can say all day. That they want a good dude, they want to be treated right, but that's not who's. That's, that's not, not who they're so James, from the back. So James, let me ask you this. Tell me, jacket and the white beater under it. So James, that's let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, James. Are you uh -huh. telling me that the woman's sexuality, her sexual desires, are in the way when she's younger, and it clouds her ability to really discern what type of man she's dealing with? Uh, that's part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I well, have what a feeling. I agree with that. I agree. So you. As a female, Ashley Brown 100 Correct. on YouTube, yes. follow her. You have decided to take the penal haze out of the equation Correct. so you can better assess what type of man you're dealing with? Correct. Because I feel like my female friends have all been clouded by the dick. So they sit over here and Digmatized. talk to these. Digmatized. Right. Exactly. So they sit over here and date these assholes who are no good for nothing. And I'm not trying to bash men on the show. Mm -hmm. But... They are hypnotized by sex in the dick. Right. Oh, so what are your, let me just do this. You're dating somebody four months in. Correct. And in four months, have you been able to identify three, two, one of his character flaws? Um, I have. He's a very, um, 
he's kind of impatient when it comes to certain things, which is weird that he's impatient because he hasn't been impatient or pressured me to have sex the mm-hmm. whole four months that we've been together. Never once brought it in. I initiate most of the sexual things that we do, oh. not him, because he doesn't want to pressure me. So you guys are not having sex, but it's kind of diet sex. I have a, right. I have okay. a question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch it. Diet. Don't touch it. Diet sex. Uh, a question. Since y'all haven't had sex in four months. Correct. Do you believe that he hasn't had sex in four months? I honestly believe he hasn't had sex in four months. Just because I'm not sleeping with you doesn't mean that I can't please you in other ways. Don't sit up here and think that I'm Mother Teresa where okay. I just don't do anything. I got a lot of pain. Okay. I got a lot of pain. I got another question. Go ahead. Just because... He hasn't entered your vagina in four months. Correct. Do you believe that he hasn't entered any vagina in four months? This guy that I'm dating right now, yes, I do believe that. Other guys, no. That's cool. Call in. If you you believe, agree, or disagree, call us, 323-963-1600. Lewis Dix. Um, what are what are some of the character well, issues yeah, that I we have bring a, to the I table? have a freshman daughter at Emerson College and, and mm-hmm. um when she uh, was seventeen she had a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And I decided um, one of the most important things was to meet the young man and take him for a walk and explain to him what I expected of him. Absolutely, right. and bro. She was, she, was quite, she was quite embarrassed, but I told her that's the price of admission. Good. Right. Now, when she called me and said, Dad, I have a boyfriend in college, right away I said, uh, is he nice? Mm-hmm. Is he in school? Mm-hmm. And what, is his, what are his goals? Mm-hmm. Because that was enough character. Because as far as I'm concerned, anything below the waist is going to happen when it happens. Regardless. Yes. Right. So right. It's, you're not going to control that. That's for the person, their character, to control it. So it's kind of like what I noticed that men don't do and should do sometimes is a lot of times when I was driving with my son, who's in Morehouse's second year. Yes. And I just, I love him to death. Congratulations, bro. That's a, that's, we're really happy about that. Yeah. And what I notice is that when I'm driving and I see a female that I think is pretty, it's important for me to focus not on her, mm-hmm. not to look. Right. I made a conscious decision not to, so he wouldn't think it's okay. Right. He's going to think what he wants. And I just think men have to, just like I'm listening to everyone go at Sounds this like young lady. You, I think you said something, that's, that's really big what you just said. It's, it's teaching management of desires and urges. Okay. Well, there's a time and place yes. for everything. That's but what, I, what I've noticed is like everything that men, because all of us are older than this young lady here, but everything that we've come at her has been about sex. Correct. It's been about below the waist. And my thing is if I'm her father, and I'm hearing all these older men come at her like that. I'm like, we should know better. We should have a better, we should try so to get information the, for, from this, her in a different way. So this, this is, is one of the character flaws that we're Well, I wouldn't call it a flaw because, I, think it is. I mean, you know, the thing, that's one of the things with the men in our, you know, we have one chromosome. Our brain works differently. And if we constantly hear about flaws, negative, negative, that's what's hurting us but right no, now. It's, 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 how you, it's, it's, it's how you convey it. It's how you contextualize it. At the end of the day, a flaw is nothing but a challenge for you to overcome. Yes, but if period. you constantly, it's just like you say in coaching. If I'm coaching a kid and I constantly tell him what he's doing wrong, wrong, mm. as opposed to just demonstrating and saying, hey, I really like how you boxed out. Right. Let's try to do that 10 more times. Right. right. As opposed to you didn't box out, you didn't box out, you didn't box out. Right. And men don't react that way. We, we, we're we reactionary. So if you tell me negative, negative, then I'm going to wait for you to tell me that I did it right. Right. And we didn't get that a lot from especially, our fathers. Especially if you don't get those jewels in between, like you said, that demonstrate exactly the point. Yeah, because the XY chromosome is going to give you that. Exactly. Go ahead, uh, <coughs> oh, Jeff. I'm, I'm about to start texting folks because I, yeah, I got a couple things to say. Then you're going to have to wait. Hilarious. And now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's your turn. All right. There you go, uh, Jeff. Shit. Okay, we need to back up about a minute and a half. I could have swore you said that there's something wrong. I was about to start texting with people. looking... At the female form and that it sends the wrong message to your son. No, I'm saying if you constantly look and and drool and make that that so important, you can look. I mean, we all look. If a girl goes by, she's cute, you look real quick. That's not what you said. No, yeah, if I'm driving with my son, if we're (laughs) we're riding in the car and he's a good woman walks by, if I stare at her and, and gawk at her, that's letting him know. That's, That's what, okay. oh, my dad, oh, my dad, dad does, does that. that. As okay. opposed to me just focusing. Okay. He's going to look, I, I, don't have to, I don't have to, and right now we're just giving them too much information. It's kind of like texting, you know? Yeah. You know just, how you get addicted to texting? I think we get I'm addicted gonna to looking. I think I'm going to text some people. Okay, let, let me, let me, okay. I was just with my son yesterday, my 15-year-old, 
And a red bull walked by who was 60% ass. <laughs> I couldn't pretend not to see that. Okay? I 60%? Not, yeah. I could not pretend not to see that. No, so, you could have pretended. You just didn't want to. Yes, no, you, because that's hypocritical. You know, no, they're, it's they're, not they're, hypocritical. It's no, educating. Louis, 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 this is a girl. Uh, no, you, you had to see the booty <laughs> on this girl. It was no way. No, he didn't. I could. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this girl's butt was so big, she has never been fucked missionary, okay? That's how, bi- that's wow. how big her butt was. Wow. But that's, that's just okay. you know, that's that's too that, easy. You know, there's, right. a, there's, a, there's a passage in the Bible. I forget where it is, but I, I was discussing with some people a few months ago, and they said... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not a sin to notice, but it's a sin to look. At right, the that's it, and that's it. You don't have to take the second look. Uh, you, you know, it, we're just we're going to notice everything, but when you uh, take that second look, that's when you know that's when you're kind of leaning into your right. your lower self. But I guess I'm going to hell for second looks because yeah, I got about a pound of them. I'm okay, sorry, I have, I have Doc, four that's sons. That's a black man's weakness. Uh, yeah, a red yeah. bull with a big ass is our weakness. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm you not. That. I'm not going to sit here. I, I love well, you to death. I, well, I'm going to ask. Well, I want to ask. Ahead, all, I'm going to ask all the grown ups in the room, uh, which uh, we're waiting for them to come in. But uh, <laughs> I'm playing with uh, blocks. But I'm gonna, I would. I, like am, I would. I, no, I would imagine. <laughs> And I'm if, looking uh, at it. I would imagine it, it's Ashley, right? Yes. yes. I would imagine if Ashley was our daughter. We'd be kind of proud of her standing for principles. Absolutely, but, Absolutely. But I just said that. Yeah. If we, but w- if we were going after some young twenty-five-year-old for ourselves, we wouldn't be that pleased. Exactly. About her so it's off. like a double standard. It, it is no, the male not. double standard. I don't. I, don't, I have no. Uh, I think you're very attractive. Thank but, you. But uh, uh, sexually, uh, I I have you. I have no interest. And, and I don't mean this to offend you. I have no interest in you sexually because mm-hmm. you already told me that you don't have any experience. I <sighs> I want somebody that, that man, we're going we, we to gonna kill one another So in then here. my question is to you because I've seen both sides where females lie about being a virgin still because it turns guys on. So mm-hmm. you yes. are one person who are saying that. So the fact that you say that I'm not experienced makes you unattractive to like you don't want to sleep with me or have sex no. with me because I'm not because you well one you're 25 correct okay? I don't and I don't I make a rule I don't sleep with a, with women who can't finish this once there was a boy and girl <laughs> 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 you can't finish that I so can't it's finish a, that but I bet you I bet you the poet is can so just because I can't finish a song doesn't mean I, I couldn't finish you, so. you off because Ooh, no no no, 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 no. Wow. coming is coming is coming okay uh, uh, so uh, then what's the difference I've always been about? sleepy. I've always had a mess to clean up. Okay, so what's your point? I'll tell you. Here's the point. Here's the point. How I feel exactly after. There's a way I want to feel, which is why I don't have frivolous sex anymore. I have to feel a certain way. And I don't with a woman that is too young. The, the gap is too is too huge. It's not about how it's, it's not about how you look. It's not about what you do. It is about the spiritual connection that I don't feel with younger women that I do with women my age and older. Great point, Doc. Well, Take us to break. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't agree with that. No, Doc, uh, hold on, everybody. Want, everybody, the Doc say, is going to take I us to get, break. I want to get a uh, answer on the end, end of this break. But why is why is sex important? Because part of what Ashley is saying it, it's important enough for her to hold off and I'd ask the younger people who don't hold off why is it so unimportant to not hold off exactly. wow exactly. great what, question what's the importance when we of return sex? we're going to get the answers we're going to phone calls 323-965-1600 this show is off the meter right now we'll be back at 2.2 holla
Woo, ladies and gentlemen, Zometheus Rising, the voice of reason, Zo What Morning Show, back in the building here with Jeff Brown, Dr. Mark Goulston, PhD, of course, James Hanna, Truth Pace, and the incomparable Lewis Dix. I love you. You. I was wondering if, <laughs> if, if Jeff wanted, they, can they finish that song? Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, our special, special guest, the female voice. You're not going to take all of this chicanery from us knuckleheaded, male, testosterone-driven exactly. knuckle-draggers. Ashley Brown, 100, join her on YouTube. She's in the building right now defending exactly. her virginity. I love yeah. it. Good example. <laughs> hey, I know she's setting a good example for, Absolutely. Another, for, for another young <laughs> Absolutely. lady in the room. Chuck Doe, in the building, young, 19-year-old intern producer soon to be on air journalist all, she's all of that in the building right now i think you're setting a good example now all yeah, six years it. older than her and letting her know like hey sometimes the sexuality or the pursuit of it can cloud your it vision does. so back to the doc's question before he before we went to break doc can you give us that question again and then we're going to go to our first caller 323-965-1600 yeah, the qu question was the you know why is or how come sex is important be, because uh, uh, you know what Ashley's saying is it, it's important enough for me to sort of think about it before I just sort of do it without thinking about it and then the question is why are there some people that are so young who don't think it's important enough to think about it? they just do it you know as soon as they have the impulse we, Jeff well sexually we've been numbed we've been numbed uh, children's innocence is just basically under attack just from there, there's stuff that I have to actively pursue mm -hmm. to keep away from my nine and my six year old. That is, it, that's one of the. Chief but it, I mean, sexuality and the images of it is ubiquitous through the media. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, it's iPhone. It's iPad. It's iTouch. It's everywhere. I mean, even with my son, and I have a sixteen year old, and a thirteen year old, and an eleven year old. Now the eleven year old is still watching. Goku and you know <laughs> Dragon Ball you. Z but the 16 and the 13 year old are now being introduced to a different level of in my opinion of adulthood and they're still 16 13 and 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 again it was interesting how you brought up the spinners record and I always use this example all the old school records all they do is reflect back to a time that reflected different social game rules. So when Marvin Gaye said, let's get it on, he didn't say, let me stick my dick in your pussy. <laughs> he didn't say that. But the records say that now. Right. You see what I'm saying? So there is a, a, a validity to a desensitized kind of mind when we deal with the younger kids. And that content, I remember back in the day, Let's Get It On wasn't an appropriate record for kids. When you heard, you pew, can't, pew, that meant, pew, that pew. meant you, get you go upstairs <laughs> when that come on. You see? So that's well, a great problem. Is, <laughs> that's a great joke, Jeff. Yeah. The problem is, too, is, is that... You know, kids are just, too many kids are just raised wrong. It's like, you can't, you know, we're in the age of the baby mama. And, exactly. you know, that, you know that's got a lot to do with it. When you, when the only dude you ever see your mama with is the nigga coming out your room, out of room at 725 in the morning. That, you know, it's got, you know, that has a lot to do with it. Kids don't see their parents together, so they don't know, a young boy don't know, how can I put this, oh, he Lewis, ain't never seen his mama be somebody woman. Louis right. disagrees wow. with you. No, no, no. You know, how to treat a woman. All wow. he knows is what he sees on hears on the radio and hear and sees on one oh six in park is that all dudes supposed to do is drive a nice car and they get some ass. Great point. But Jeff you know, but, you know, but Lewis Dix. Know. But Lewis Hannah, you just said earlier right. that you couldn't you had to look at the girls behind because uh -huh. it was so big. It, it's subtle things like that. Because but every Lewis, but that Lewis, but you, but you're contradicting same, at the same yourself. Time, my but I you have to go that. But see, my mother. point because of the because of the over sex stuff they're selling, we have to work as men under sex. Ah. You have to. You have to. We have to fight it. It's like a PG thirteen movie is really an R rated movie. I was right. watching a, a movie called High Pitch or where Pitch Fever or something, uh -huh. and a scene was, and I'm watching it with a, a a twelve year old young lady and and her mom, and the scene was the girl was in the shower mm -hmm. and another girl comes in the shower with her and the girl's like hey I'm naked and then the, a boy walks by and talks to them in the shower. 
Mm. Now what I'm is, embarrassed all, at that point. All the boundaries, all oh, the borders oh, yeah, are destroyed. Now, and I and then right. the young girl, when I brought it up, I said, I can't watch this. She's like, Why? I said, Because this is embarrassing. I said, This is crossing the line. Now the little girl got tried to get embarrassed. I'm like, You can't get embarrassed if you're gonna sit here and watch this. Right. You gotta, it, you, you gotta you, pay. You, so you 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 we we're putting too much into these kids' images and then we as adults are not combating it. Dr. Mark Goldston, do you agree but, or disagree? But Lewis, Lewis, you can't combat it. You gotta understand something. It's it's a break. All you can have all that bullshit on the radio and TV that you want. It starts at home. That's my point. You were in the car looking at the behind with your son there. <laughs> wow. That started at home. Exactly. But no, wow. but you can't have it both time, ways. No, 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 bro. At the same time, my my son gets to see me with his mother. He sees a loving relationship. And but where was I'm his freedom? Man. But when he's I'm oh look, see, I'm a man. Look, That's where it goes. I'm a man, so I gotta look. No, if you're that much of a man, if you're that much of a man, you don't I'm have saying, to look, ooh, Hannah. Preach. If you're wow. gonna be that much of a man, wait, wait. look once and keep exactly. it moving. That's a good point, Doc. Can I can I but, get you to chime okay, in? Hold on, James. Like, well, hold on a second. Okay, okay, okay like, James. You ain't seen an ass that's so big. Yes, you can't and, help and, but notice. no, you can't help no, but notice. I'm a man. No I've you lived. Don't have ass that look like they made horses. You was okay. I'm see, not gonna see, see you are compromising. You exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. You keep Hippity making excuses. Hop, mob stop. Come Lewis on. Dix. Nineteen no, two thousand one. Jeff Brown, James <laughs> Hanna, Lewis Dix, Buddy Lewis standing outside when Iva LaShawn walks by Ooh. with an ass like a fine and cut was our, And were our children Iva? with us? No. It was three but, grown men Iva and it LaShawn. was at a nightclub. I'm almost club. done. Okay, and I'm we didn't refer to done. her. We talked to each other. I'm almost done. Que pl I pretty please with sugar on top. Please quit pretending like ass on some level isn't kryptonite. I don't know where you're getting uh, see, this. See, it's not about that. What it I'm is, saying is there's a time and a place. It is. And when you're sitting next to your 16-year-old child, you that's what, not the bullshit. time or place. Not my this son. Bullshit because you know what? Well, y'all can say what y'all want. I've said what I've said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, it doesn't matter to me. You here. You're not going to influence me. Just no, nobody's going to Wait, 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 wait. Wait, listen. Okay, everybody I'm everybody like, can't everybody you, hey J james hold one second i'm gonna come right to you everybody can't keep talking at the same time I'm done. i know this is passionate but we've got to regain some goddamned order <laughs> all right i need okay. all right now james finish your thought please thank you i'm gonna pretend not to notice a big ass with my son when big ass got him here <laughs> 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 okay, that's, that's just I'm ridiculous. How does that have to do with like, that's just stupid. I mean, I it's stupid. It a, this girl, you, you just had to see the ad. I'm not. She walked. I, she almost hit her. She jumped out in front of the car. I had to hit the brakes. Boom! Big ass right there. I just, <laughs> even my son noticed it. I'm glad he noticed it. Well, you know what I in think. This day and age, okay? You, I mean, I'm glad you know noticed in this it day and age you know what I think? with HIV, uh, unprotected sex, STDs Great going points. on, and this time and age. That's why Great you're points. not supposed to keep noticing it. You know what? We talked about this before. Get the fuck out of here with that. Really? Hey, hey, man. Really? Again, see, that's Come our on. problem. We want to discount on. the reality. First of all, I don't. I, that's another show. I don't think straight people get the shit. So, I mean, I, 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 See, really now you're talking on. really Okay, ignorant. so wait, let's do this. Let's do I don't this. Think this is what I think. It. Everybody, don't make, don't force me to take another break because I will. This is what I think is going on here. Ladies, if you're paying attention to this show, if you're watching this show, you are seeing several male character flaws that could be brought to a relationship that would ultimately tear it down. I mean, you're seeing an example of a group of men behaving poorly we can't even talk to each other my sweet dick i cannot believe it's the, you just i don't said that. i don't want to know about your dick so wonder you're on the phone let's go <laughs> oh lord thank you for please letting me through good lord what's going on ball people what's up man <laughs> Uh, Jeff, uh, Dr. Goldston. Hey, Doc. Um, hey, there, man. Lewis old, Dix, uh, James. I have a question for her. Yes. What's up? I'm a 25-year-old sex expert that is a virgin. She's not a See, sex expert. A sex no, she's expert. a relationship expert. She's a relationship, relationship guru, I'm expert. Sorry. Sorry. Personality I extraordinaire. Put put it all up on there. Yes, she's all of it. Sprinkles at the toppings. Go ahead. She's the next Oprah. Okay. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I, I applaud you. Because your boy, because uh, you, you know you 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 haven't had intercourse. I have a, a twenty-two year old. Okay. 
Okay. You know, and well, she's not like that, but you know, she's 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 doing well in college and all that good stuff. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Here's, yeah. my, here's my question: When we talk about no no sex, and you say something to the effect of that you please your man in other ways, right? Isn't that in my? I mean, it's in my opinion. I feel like that is just as cloudy as the actual act of sex of you doing other things. Interesting. Because to me, no sex means no sex. I mean, that's, inter- that's interesting. See, and that's the thing. Like, we that's have discussions about that all the time. Some people think, I'll sleep with you, but I'm not going to give you head because that means that I care about you or that's way more important than having sex. Some people say they'll give head and not have sex, which is my case. Just because I'm not having sex with you doesn't mean that I wouldn't do other things. I was raised the way, like, if you give your virginity to someone, that's the person you're going to be with or you're going to wait to marry marriage and then that's going to be... <laughs> the gift you give him. So just because I'm giving head, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it's still take away what, from he, what he's still what, what, what we're what we're starting to do here. Thank you, Soul Wonder. Appreciate the call. But I think what we're starting to do here is identify some female double standards as well as some male double standards. Uh, Lewis Dix brought up a great point. If we're going to change the way we view women. Because, like I said, we talked about this before on another show. We talked about a book that you can get. It's called Dick Management. And Lewis, although he didn't put it in those terms, even though his last name is Dix, is... <laughs> D-I-X but, for those of y'all but really, But really, Lewis is in alignment with this book. The book is called How to Manage Your Dick. And it's talking about the spiritual essence of masculinity. And it does not have to run amok. When it runs amok... It fucks up society, masculine energy. And again, masculine energy at its lowest vibration equates to war. Feminine energy at its lowest vibration gives life indiscriminately. This is why a a woman can have a baby just because she wants something to love her as opposed to wanting a family Mm -hmm. around the baby. Do you understand? She'll have a baby to fill a hole. You see what I'm saying? A traumatic hole, as opposed to understanding having a baby means ar- being becoming an architect of a family, right? So uh, uh, again, Lewis made great points. Soul Wonder made a great point, and so did Ashley. Next caller, Kendra, you're on the line. Hello, hello. What up, Ken? What's going on? I'm chilling. I, I just got out of my meeting, and I told you I'd call in. So uh, go in, uh, go in. Okay. I'm a, I'm a little lost, um, but I just want to say that me being a boss supervisor has not went to my head because mm. I was this way before, you know, I became supervisor. I've only been supervisor about a year and a half, mm-hmm. so I had those thoughts of, you know, me being single, independent, not having to rely on a man for anything other than the dick. You know, this is a good point. I, and we can integrate this into the show. I, I, I see you. I see you go deeper. I just, I have two sides. Right. Where I feel like it may be an issue if I'm in a relationship with somebody. Okay, I make more money than most men, you know, that I'm interested in. Are they going to have a problem with that? Well, let's do it this way. Can I answer that? Yes, you can. Oh and so God. can Jeff Brown oh if he would God. just... What's going I don't on even with Jeff? I'm here today. I give you honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Answer it, James Hanna. Okay, first of all, let me say this nicely. Uh, the independent thing is a, a crock of shit. Don't stop. That's not nice, that. James. <laughs> okay. Because um, the second you meet a dude that make more money than you, you're going to be in his pocket, which blows your whole independent thing. Um, That's not true. Most dudes don't care what you make, baby. Okay, the average dude does not care. The problem is, the most of this is y'all don't shut the fuck up about how much you make, and that's what makes dudes uncomfortable. You mean she's beating the okay. drum about how high she's risen? Yeah. You just, I mean, if you were with a dude, be with that dude. Be a woman like to that. that dude without talking about your money. Okay, that's too many people who do that. They always got to remind a nigga how much they make. That's, that's, what, that's a turnoff. It ain't, you, it ain't your money. It's you talking about your money. Ooh. Okay, and if any dude money, cares about how much you make, you're about to get pimped. Yeah. Okay, wow. any dude that's impressed with your money is about to pimp your ass. Woo, great okay, point. So Jeff Brown, that, hold on, hold on. That bullshit right Kendra, now. 
Kendra? And that's only that's the thing Kendra. I'm worried about. I don't want them to be into me for my money. I want them to be into me for me. I don't want them to think I'm going to buy some damn new Jordans and shit every time I get paid. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, the issue I'm worried about. You know, wow. because I don't talk about my money. It's just, you know, it's fact. You know? I think she's I mean, saying. You brought it up just now. For no reason at all. For no reason, you just you felt the need to validate your opinion with your money. My supervisor, and you can't tell me that you ain't at the cheesecake factory talking shit about your money with a dude. Ooh, like a man. because I hear how sometimes it's a not because not because you not said because no, you don't get a because. Kendra. You don't get, you don't a, get because. a because. You say it's, it's 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 yay or nay. It's on or off. You said you don't talk about your money. Quick question. I don't talk about my money. Kendra, I, I Kendra, did. wait a minute, James. I got it. Kendra, okay. uh, I've never seen you before. I. I have only heard you for 45 seconds or so, and I all, I know that you've been promoted a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and that you're a supervisor now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not in a, a relationship with you. I have a question. Do God, you, buddy. do you, or any of the women you know, ever get in an argument with a man, and uh, the subject of uh, uh, money comes up, and and it had nothing to do with the with the argument. Do you know anybody like that? Mm, not me personally. Yes, exactly. They don't exist. Uh, uh, that, that's who we're talking about. And I understand how this is uh, uh, detached from you because you don't know any of these people. And let me do this. Let me do this because this is another show, Kendra. We're, uh -huh. you, you took us on an odyssey. We went. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You obviously weren't listening that to the show. That started with your money. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But we're, yeah, uh, yeah, we're, on a, money. we're on another it's topic that you don't talk about. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, my, my, I got two fucking Rottweilers here right now. <laughs> Three of them, really. I don't never talk but, about my money, but, but I can't be late but, for work. I'm supervisor now. <laughs> but let me just say this. Let me, let me, let me give Kendra some some uh, re remedy here. Thank you for the call, Kendra. Appreciate you reaching out. Kendra and I were having a conversation earlier today, this morning on Twitter. And she was talking about how she's a boss and how she's having a difficult time turning off the inner boss when she's mm -hmm. in relationship. She didn't say that. So right. I talked to her about control. I talked to her about submission, how submission is not necessarily uh, uh, humiliation. You know, because a lot of times when you're a powerful person, male or female, when you have to compromise, that is seen as some kind of weakness in relationship. And she was like, you know what? That makes sense. I have a difficult time releasing control. I have a difficult... Okay, I don't understand what's going on with Jeff. Jeff is... Go ahead, Jeff. Shit. You're, concept, you're really annoying today. The concept of being in a relationship with a man and the man being the leader is not compromise. That is order okay if is there it? are two no. in the words of will smith in the words of will or in the words of will smith if there are two generals on the field everybody dies that's true okay that's uh, true. are you that's the a good leader point. yes or no and then you need to have this conversation with your man and if your man wants to be led by you then that's fine however if you are not it doesn't matter how much money you make at work you at work. You need to turn that money making shit off because we are in here making a home and making a home takes a different skill set than uh, uh, managing strangers. Wow. The okay. phone lines are on fire. James, you want to wrap it up and then I'm going to Lewis Dix. Okay, here's the problem. The average sister has a problem where they think that being the queen means castrating the king. And mm. that's, that's the problem. Okay. Do you agree it's like just because you the you the you the. Vice President of Pistol Sharpening at IBM, turn that <laughs> shit off when you get in the driveway. Wow. Okay? What? That's all you need to do is get home, shut the fuck up, cook, suck some dick, and get your man some time on the PlayStation. What That's the how you hell? keep a man. No. <laughs> yes. Doctor. No. Okay. Dr. Mark Goulston's turn. Everybody, Dr. Wait, wait, Mark. Let me say this one more thing. This is serious. This is serious. Go ahead. Is the pro all joking aside, the thing is, is women are keep trying to sell us. Men want what we want. We want food, sex, and space. And women have been trying for the last 30, 40 years, been trying to sell us this other bullshit of having a job. I'm educated. I, got a, I went to this school, and I dress this way, and I know all this shit here. And then they got nothing to do with food, sex, and silence. That's, wow. why they're not, that's why they're not getting men. Quit selling us that bullshit. Everything else is secondary. Give us food, sex, and silence, and then we'll be cool. Hang out for 40 years. So, I, I, so, it, so if I'm to understand this correctly, James, it sounds like classism... And materialism 
is now a part of the relationship expectation Absolutely. when women concerning women. Sounds like that's what you're saying. Dr. Mark, what do you exactly. think? Exactly. Dr. Mark, wake up. I know it's been crazy. <laughs> do all of you agree? Listen to this. There we go. Do all of you the agree voice that, of reason. The voice of re- do all of you agree that in, in when you're out in the world, you got to be in control, but when in matters of the heart, you got to give up control because when you there try and go. control a relationship, you there kill it. Go. There we go. Would mm-hmm. you agree with that? Anybody agree with that? I, agree. 100. Yes. You got to yes. give up yes. control. Yes. Okay. Yes. So would you, yes. also, would you also agree that when you take the attitude that you got to be right and you can't be wrong, right. that you're being controlling? Mm. Yes. yes. And so I, yes. I think part of, cause part of what, we're, what we're all seeing here is the need to be right. I can't be wrong and, uh, you know, and, uh, and I don't care what you're saying. I've checked out. And when you bring that into a relationship uh i don't think it's going any uh, where good soon right 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 this is right. good stuff lewis Dix, and, and i think um the piggyback what he was saying is that you you really learn that when you have children you know you learn how to identify what's important right because yeah. your kids can come in a room and have something totally more important you know when you have a a kid under 10 it's really just to be a kid when you have a kid between 10 and 16 it's to to fit in and then you have to adjust as a parent and then when the kids over 17 18 in the real world you have to adjust to saying okay i got to really help this kid Great navigate point. it so it's it's and then you really become selfless and and that's the one thing that happens when you when you love someone you become selfless mm. and you stop judging mm. you stop start saying this is what i believe because you really start listening lewis there if are, you're if you're still judgmental can you say you love your partner if if it's it's, again, if it's the time and place, if you're being judgmental to help them navigate through something, mm, and even then you point. might have to step back and say, this is what I believe. But before you, especially with women, the way their brains think, you have to say, listen, I'm saying this because because here's one thing that you learn with when a woman asks a man, are you OK? Right. A man usually tells the truth. Right. If you ask a woman, are you OK? <laughs> if, 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 a, if you ask a woman, she's OK. And she says, yeah, she's really probably not telling the truth because there's other things going on. Right. Mm. But she's just trying to get through the evening. And and one of the best evenings I've ever had was when I had some good salmon and some potatoes <laughs> and asparagus and a good movie. And we sat down and enjoyed, you know, just the time of being cooking dinner together, washing dishes together, doing things together mm. and leaving all that stress in the garage when you pull in your car. Jeff Brown. Brown. You know what? There are two Lewis Dixes. <laughs> well, I love I, this guy. I know. The I, other dude. The is, other guy. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't want to hit with a fucking bus. I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't. know. It's I, called I, maturity. It's, it's called. It's called under. I have two kids in college now. Yes, so, and I dig that, Lewis. You know, and and the other one. The other <laughs> one is there. <laughs> the dude that tells me I can't look at ass because my seventeen-year-old sitting there. Yeah, I don't like that dude. He can't <laughs> drink a beer. <laughs> <ain't>. <laughs> uh, that, oh, this is excellent. Let me go to the callers right now. Alexis, you're on. Talk to me. <laughs> Oh, it's good. It's not Alexis. Jay Nasty. No. Oh well, Jay Nasty. There isn't Alexis on the line, but we're gonna go with Jay Nasty. What up? Jay hey, Nasty. Nasty. Jay Nasty. Hey, what's what's up, happening? What's up, so man? A brother from another mother. You know what I'm talking about? Word <laughs> up, man. Word up. Let's uh, get it cracking. Yeah. Jeff, uh, also, the guest. I believe your name is Ashley. Yeah. What's yes. up? This was good. Sure. Right. Look, keep up the good work. Thank if you, you. don't want to have sex until you ready for it then don't thank absolutely you. Don't. Thank you. i'm raising i'm raising two girls myself right and one is three and the other one is mm, a couple months something like that <laughs> anyway <laughs> what that's honest that's honest, that's that's honest. honest. Yeah. i don't even know i don't know. remember when she was born she sleeping through the night i ain't had no sleep in weeks <laughs> Right. It, it seems like kind of sort of like what I hear from a lot of males, especially when I'm out there in the world, or I'm, I'm out there going to do consulting at IT firms and things like that. It seems as if the men want. To she has this. And, and ladies and gentlemen, touching shit? and ladies and gentlemen, that was nasty. Chuck yeah. Doe has hung up on Chuck, all of the uh, callers. Uh, Chuck. Our new intern. She's Chuck. always doing great things for us. Chuck, three words, three words, three words, Chuck, three words. Don't touch shit. Don't touch shit. Don't touch shit. Take her to uh, Chuck E. G. Don't, yeah, don't you touch can't shit. Don't touch shit. That's how stuff. She, she that's, cut off everybody. That's how shit gets off the rails. When you see lights and buttons, shit gets off the rails. Cause you start touching shit. Don't touch shit. She hung up on everybody. That's genius. Poetry. That is hilarious. Touch shit. What is she touching shit? <laughs> yeah.
Okay, bring Jay Nasty back. That was great. She just oh, okay. Wait, can I? Can I? Uh, I want to go I'm, ahead. Don. I want to throw something in. Absolutely. This, uh, I want to uh, give a parenting tip because Please. it seems people talking about their kids, and I want to yeah, see absolutely. if this will work. Um, you, our goal as parents, and uh, Lewis, I'd be interested if you agree with this. Our goal as parents is that when our kids hit age 18, they can enter the world with mm-hmm. confidence. They mm-hmm. can take a punch without having to punch back. Mm-hmm. They have a sense of humor about themselves. Or they take the world seriously. Uh, they don't bail. They don't quit. They don't blame. They mm-hmm. don't make excuses. Would you agree? Oh, totally. Okay, so mm-hmm. a, a parenting tip is uh, I think every parent – once a month, should take a walk and say, is the way I parent going to have that outcome? Mm. Is, 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 is mm. That is I, excellent. Is what I'm saying and doing that going is to excellent. result in an 18-year-old can, can go into the world, smile and confidence, uh, take a hit and not uh, fold. And uh, I think it's important but, to pause and because a lot of times what we're doing is creating the opposite. Right. And wow. Doc, totally you know great. why that yeah. is so beautiful? What, this is... I put this on Twitter and Facebook the other day. We are dating our neuroses. We're married to our neuroses. When we get hurt, we have been conditioned to think that the next relationship will be the parachute, the safety net Mm. from what's wrong with whatever has happened to us. And this is the problem. You just posed a question that requires objectivity but so much or so many of us are under the rulership of hurt and pain mm. from past well, here, relationships here's a, here's a good so it, it, it's difficult okay. to get to a okay. space to say those kind of things it, it, when you're parenting well, from a space of neurosis what, what we're all hearing also is we're, we're hearing that people th- this whole society thinks that uh that uh give uh not giving in to an impulse is bad. This whole society says, if I have an impulse, I am entitled to act on it. Right. And a great parenting thing to do also every week mm-hmm. is, to, is to have everyone in the family share a story about an impulse they did not give in to. What was something that you resisted right. doing? Wow. Shit down. Well, mm-hmm. that you yeah. resisted doing, yeah. and it wasn't easy, uh, but it was much better that you resisted doing it. Because this whole society is about, if I get this impulse, God gave me his blessing uh, to act on it, and I'm entitled to it, and that's why everything's so chaotic. Right, right. Lewis? Yeah, and one of the- you, I mean, you're only human. You can only, you, you know, some, you, you win some, you lose some. You know, it's just... Uh, yeah, but you know, I tell my sons. I tell my sons just because something can not be done don't mean it should be done. And, and wow. then you just hope like hell that he exercises that he exercises. Right. And one of the important yeah. things is is that you really have. We made this a point to have dinner. You know, as much Absolutely. as you can with your kids, because it just takes away the an impulse of I'm going to be upstairs. Right. No, we're setting the table. We're laying down plates. We're washing the dishes. We're cleaning up. It's only a matter of maybe 90 minutes of right. your time. But it really makes an impact Absolutely. because those kids look for it every time. And they start acting doing that in their family. It's just rituals that you have to, you have to create. Right. We, we, we had some Jewish friends, and we, we, was, we used to always go to bar mitzvahs. Mm. And one of them was Orthodox. And they didn't have the party for a year, so we had to go back a year later to celebrate the the party because the guy's um, father had died. Mm-hmm. So we you couldn't have it. And, and my son just like a year later, he's like, "Why are we going to this party?" And I said, "Because it's a ritual." And if we had more rituals like like the Jewish people and the Catholics, as African Americans, we would really and we used to have those all the time. And we're getting away from certain rituals that are it's not self; it's more of the community. And we don't have enough of that. And, and if we get back to that, and I don't say go to bar mitzvahs every time. You should. You really, It's really a beautiful event if you go to one. It's $18. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you. It's right. Increments of 18. That's what I've learned. So Jeff Brown? Give up my uh, speaking of inf- impulse control, uh, I'm teaching my sons to uh, masturbate before they go on dates. Hilarious. Yes. Uh, <laughs> house. Yes, absolutely. I your because kids are nine because and six. Advice. Huh? What's exactly. that? Excellent advice. Yes. Because now uh, your your dick is taking a nap and you get to do the thinking. Um, the inverse <laughs> put, of that. Put your dick to sleep before, before you go on the date. <laughs> dick, which is sound advice for any woman who wants to keep a man. Put his dick to sleep before he leaves the house. Now, uh, uh, <laughs> with, uh, 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 with regard to my daughter, with regard to my daughter, when she starts to date, when the young man comes to my house, 
Son, I don't trust your impulse control. Get your ass in the bathroom, go on, squeeze, squeeze one out. That way I know you know you you're on a you're in a different place with my daughter. I don't have to worry about you trying to fertilize her eggs. I don't have to worry about you doing no braggadocio shit in front of your friends because you left your DNA here and you're gonna have to look sleepy before you leave this house. Wow. If you leave it with my daughter. Wow. Three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. Ashley, Ashley. Yes. So you're basically saying, so say your daughter, how old is your daughter? My daughter's nine. Okay, so when she's 17 and she gets jealous of her dude going out, you're telling her, you're encouraging your daughter to put her boyfriend's dick to sleep no, before I'm not. he goes out. No, I'm not. I no, don't know what he part of said, that you said. He's saying I, he's, going he's going to, to talk up, to dude, her boyfriend. Dude is coming to my house. Correct. Hey, Mr. Brown, how you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm not doing too good because I know you came over here with a full nutsack. And we're going to do something about that before my daughter puts on your safety belt. So you get in my bathroom. I got some, I got some of my favorite porn in there. Here's my iPad. I got a few things bookmarked out. You, <laughs> you work that out in there. Right. And then you can take my daughter out. If you can't. Turn around, you and your soldiers get in your car and get the fuck on. Now, for those of you listening, that is <laughs> called comedy. I have to say what he's done. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty That's good. <laughs> What's that? What'd you say, James? Do you take the iPad from him when he's done? <laughs> uh, not until he sterilizes her. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you, wife. Doc. Let me ask you, Doc. Do you think that was some good advice? Some good father to boyfriend advice with regards to taking out I your don't. teenage daughter? What do you think, Doc? I'm going to come to you, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, I think. If part, I think I, I think it's great advice, but it's all in the tone. Like we were talking before about people being judgmental. I think if you really care about someone, they know you care about them. You can say something direct like that is damn stupid. If you do that, you're going to get hurt. That's right. not being judgmental. That shows the caring. So I think if your tone is more about caring than about being right and being cute, but I don't right. give a damn about him. I don't like. I you do just not, want him to have a sleepy dick I taking your do, daughter. Thank you. I yeah. do not like nine-year-old boys. Yeah, right I, I got to tell you a spooky thing about sex. Go deeper. A spooky thing. Um, years ago, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm not a PhD. I'm an MD. I'm a psychiatrist. But years ago, on some weekends, I would work at one of the state hospitals. We'd call it moonlighting. And one of the things that some of the psychiatrists would say to me, you know, who were there full time, they'd say, you know, you know, what's really a shame is that when some of these and these these are really bad. Bad, not bad people, but they have bad schizophrenia and they're wandering around mm. smoking other people's uh, cigarette butts. And he said one of the things that he hates to do is that when, when schizophrenics are out there either masturbating in the day room or trying to hit another patient, <laughs> they have to restrain them and, and put them uh, down. And they said the sad thing is that is when they feel most alive and connected to the human race mm -hmm. and we are punishing them whereas all the because they're feeling an impulse, whereas all the other time they're, they're lost in their head and hallucinations. And he said, you know, we have to do it to maintain order. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of sad because they're actually feeling a connection to the world when they're getting feeling they're feeling alive, and we have to sort of control it out of them to maintain order. But it was really right. Kind of right. Spooky. That's a good point, uh, Ashley. I just don't agree with Jeff at all about what you just said about putting the dick asleep before you go on the date because I feel like that's encouraging or letting women know that before your man goes out, you need to put his dick asleep or at a young age too. No, it's not about you doing it. It's no. about the man, man doing, doing it to it. himself and so that he doesn't treat you like a sex no, 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 object. No, 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 hold on. James, go ahead. I see you. You're there. Go ahead, James. James um, you need to do that to your husband. You don't want your husband going out on dude's night out with a full set of nuts. This shit happens. Yes. <laughs> Is it? Okay that's, yes. not, okay, that's what you're not understanding. It ain't about... Look, 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 look. okay. When you, when you decide to have sex with this dude, this 31-year-old dude... And y'all get, and I hope God blesses you and you get married. It's no longer his dick. It's your dick. Invest mm -hmm. in it. Okay? Wow. You need to save your man. Invest in it? That's brilliant. <laughs> okay? Let me, let me do this. That's what you're doing when you, when, you, when, you let, when you get him off before he goes out. That's for you. Wow. I, I so let me do this. Be married. And that's yeah. a better investment. Here, here comes yeah. Lewis. As as he said that first. As, I'm, so I'm he, just, I'm just piggybacking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not challenging him. I'm just well, saying that. Just a lot. Maybe that's a problem, Lewis. A lot of you need to work on the way you agree. Hilarious. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's, that's funny. That's funny. Let me, let me do this. <laughs> I, I, I talk about my 16 year old and my 13 year old a lot. My son, 10th grade. The lion. Varsity basketball game tonight at Santa Monica High, if you're in the area, 7 p.m. Uh, you know, win this game and go to the championship. Okay. Anyway, yes, uh, my son, 
I told him when he was in the eighth grade, going to the ninth, I said, listen, the school we pick, it's like its own country. Hmm. In other words, it's a society. It has its own social game rules. You cannot be swayed or influenced by what happens. Now, the unfortunate part is you're going to be influenced. You have to maintain your center. And that's when I told him, relationship is a school, it's a classroom, but you don't have to enroll right now. Take your time, because once you enroll into relationships, you can never graduate. <laughs> so you don't want to get in there too soon. You don't want to pick, pick up too much too soon. And Doc, I say that to, to back up Doc's point when he talked about teaching delayed gratification. We live in a, a society that moves at the speed of technology. So we want everything right now. now. And we don't right. know how to delay any type of gratification. <laughs> and this manifests itself in our relationships. We want our relationships to be good and perfect right off the top. Yeah. The problem is relationships are designed to manifest the things you haven't worked on personally. They're designed for that. That's why I told my son, take your time before you do it. And then I said, watch your other friends. They're going to be guys because they're on varsity like you, because they play like you. They're going to be guys that have sex. Watch how their game, their grades, mm. and their mentality deteriorates. I said, yeah. trust me. Please trust me. If, you, if, you, if you've never listened to anything your father's ever said, trust me on this and watch how this works. And he did yeah. it. And one of his best friends, so he ain't shit. And he said, Dad, you were right. This is what I mean by the topic again. Are we oh, endangered? Time. Are we endangered? We are some, there's some good black men in here right now. Jeff Brown, fucking uh, Louis Dix, Zoe Williams, James uh, Hanna. We're on the phone right now, and a lot of people believe that we are lost, but I don't believe we are. Go ahead, Jeff. Many a great man has been taken down by good pussy. All right. <laughs> Many a great man have been taken down by good pussy. Oh my God. Do we not have any power over the vagina? Doc! None. I tell I tell women <laughs> like this. You, yes, I tell women like this. Oh, because women, all, all women think they got good pussy. No, yeah. so I tell the woman like this: If you've been fucking a dude for more than six months and his life ain't moved up a tick, your pussy ain't nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, sir. But why would we put Say that on? Again. But why would we put that on the vagina, Ashley? Can your vagina make me a better man? It's supposed to. Well, it's you know, yours ain't even working. Man. I can't Mine's even not even it. active right, right now, but I don't think so. It might. I don't know. I can't answer that question. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It's supposed to. I don't even think that's okay. a rational Mom expectation. Speak for itself, okay? It's basically how your man, whatever your man, your man's life, if your man's a cop and he's just a beat cop, either that motherfucker should be a sergeant in six months or busted for corruption trying to get you a goddamn necklace or something. That, if his shit is still the same, <laughs> you're nuts. Doc, I, I, I'm like you right now. I'm confused. Are you saying, are you saying... That's Chicago pimp shit. I'm, I'm just trying to understand, yeah. and, and, and James will help me. Are you saying, not, the, not just the pussy, but the being, the, the woman, the essence of her is supposed to raise you? No, I, 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 I think... No, what I'm saying is, I, I think is one of the, bomb, bomb pussy changes things yeah. for a man. For countries, okay, for get, empires. When you get some truly wet, wet, five-star, bomb-ass <laughs> pussy, it's, every, it, it's, it's like one of the moments where everything before the pussy and everything after the pussy. Yeah. Okay, what? let so the doc. Say, let the doc. Only happens to a man maybe once or twice in his life. Wow, doc. Okay, only once or twice in your life. Doctor, could you please? Shout out me? to my wife. Uh, <laughs> wow. Doc, go into the point you were trying to make, because I'm trying to understand this whole philosophy here. Go ahead. You know, I think why sex is so important to men is that men are basically distrustful, paranoid, and they don't want to get close to people. And it's the one time when they get close to another human being and it feels okay. And then before and afterwards, men are very guarded. They're paranoid. They mm. don't want to get close to anyone. And, and yet underneath, there's a real desire to connect because it gets very tiresome to keep up a guard to get through life. And then right. when you're having sex and you're in there and you're connected, you get, a, you get a relief from just being this alone guy who's supposed to be a warrior and all that sort of stuff. And I think underneath it all, you know, that, that's underneath the sex is that desire to connect with another person one-on-one right. -on -one because we feel we're supposed to be out there alone in the wilderness being strong and, 
you know, mm-hmm. uh, all things to all people. So I, I think that's part of the appeal mm-hmm. uh, uh, of that. Right. Louis Dix? I think you you mature in certain things. Like if you, you have young men, if they get a, a good grade. Mm-hmm. If they get a good compliment, if mm-hmm. they if they their project is, is their mom and dad are beaming. If as a man, if you if you see your child graduate, if you see your child up there making a good speech and not stuttering, if you see your, your kid accomplishing something, those give you the same same thrill as like James said, some good you know stuff. He said wet, good, wet. He said good wait, pussy, wait, wait. and well, you're I, wrong. And I don't have to say that. See, okay. that's another thing. I don't have to say that I don't word. Have to say it. To, to, to feel what you feel. You guys are yes. saying it as if it's so important. To, no. And it's a curse word. Lewis, it's Lewis, nasty. I'm going to challenge this. <laughs> it's mean, a curse word. It's nasty. I, I got Hannah, Hannah, whoa, whoa, whoa. At, at 1230 in the afternoon, nobody no, needs to no, hear that okay. word. Okay, uh, Lewis, I'm going to challenge you. I'm, <laughs> Lewis, I'm going to challenge you there. Unnecessary. I'm going to challenge you there. Go ahead. I am a very, as a matter of fact, I have an award for being the most involved parent. I am the 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 project making this school going this pta meeting this dude and i'm gonna tell you something if seeing your son finish a speech without stuttering is on the same level as fantastic pussy for you i challenge you and i submit to you that you've never had fantastic pussy well it's it's, again it's a it's a it's a time and place to put certain emotions i'm gonna yes i'm gonna raise that up to the level of in my brain the way my brain thinks that this is this is yeah this is exciting my heart's beating fast i'm i'm whoa yes congratulations i love you it's love yeah. It's love. Love I'm not comes in about different love. Ca- Yes, it is. You're, no, that's not what I'm discussing. That's trust me. When you have that great orgasm, you feel in love. You feel connected, like no, the doc said. No, and no, when your child no, accomplishes no. something, you feel love no. and connected. There's right. this, there's this right. Creole girl you know, in wait, Dallas wait, 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 that made my toes wait, curl. I, I got to make it. I, I got to put in a distinction. You know what? You put it in no, the distinction. The difference between sex and making love. Yes. When you have sex. It's all about. Uh, how it makes you feel when you make love it's all about how you feel about the other person wow there it is there it is ashley no i was just going back to what he was saying how pussy will inspire you to get a promotion at your job like i don't so what when you're done getting pussy you're not inspired to go to work no no here's the here's here's that burger thing that you're not okay break it down to me then experience is kicking in Mm -hmm. and you're not a man okay see Pussy means a lot more to us than what dick mean to y'all. Right. Okay. That's we got to be honest about that. Okay. Um, it's the kind of it's some pussy where it's just it's a rare because every woman think they got good pussy. That's what I think y'all got to get oh, wrap your mind around that first. Of all. <laughs> okay. That's what y'all got to wrap. That once you wrap your mind around because you could put a hundred thousand women in a stadium and every woman in that stadium think they her have pussy better pussy. than other nine hundred ninety nine thousand women in the room. And that's not the case. Good bomb ass pussy is like 5% of the female population got it. Yeah. And when you run across it, it just, it changes things. Oh. It changes things for a man. Okay? <laughs> and that's all it changes. It's just, now you got to figure out what I'm going to do to keep this bomb pussy around. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Here's some clues for all the women out there that's listening who are not virgins. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, well, it looks like we lost. If you lo- fucking okay. somebody, your pussy ain't all that. Okay, if you say that again, say that again. We lost. Hey, we lost you. Hey, we lost you, you pussy. Do, if you got a dude, you fucking, and you paying all your bills, your pussy ain't worth a damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But see, I yeah. okay. okay. Your pussy ain't yeah. nothing. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here's a here's a here's a bomb pussy test for all the ladies out there. This, I'm, really, if you're married, I can't give you this test. You married? All the single women who think they pussy is fire. When you leaving the dude's house at two thirty in the morning after that booty call, I want you to pull over on the freeway. Make sure you roll down the window so he can hear you on the freeway. Call him and tell him you got a flat tire. If he go, bitch, you ain't got eight triple A. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, but you know wow. what? I think the inverse okay. of that. Yeah, speaks, I think the man's not I think the, yeah, I think the, the man, man is, is no weak. good. Yeah, if he's, and that's if, what, again. First of all. <laughs> again, uh, Lewis, Ashley, Jeff, James, and Mark. That's the topic. You brought up the great point to bring us back to the topic. And that is, if you're a good man, mm-hmm. you're going to be connected to more than just the pussy. Thank you. Oh, yeah. The pussy. I agree with that. I, I say this all the time. I said there's more water on planet Earth than there is pussy. Pussy is not special unless it's connected to a special being. 
a special person who has quality, integrity, and meaning and knows it. Right. If you are dating someone, right, who is unaware of their own neuroses, who is unaccountable for that neuroses, then I don't care how good the, the sex is. is, it's still going to be problematic. So my point is, if a if you pull over, if you use James Hanna's uh, litmus test, and you just had sex with a guy that you're feeling, and you pull over on the side and say, "My tires flat. I need your help," and he doesn't come, and I don't mean C U M. I mean C O M E. If he doesn't arrive. come, if he doesn't arrive, he doesn't come to, to to assist you. Then that's telling you what kind of dude you are. Exactly. And it goes back to my question initially. Exactly. Are we, as a culture, right, deficient in producing strong, quality black alpha men? Yes. That's the question. Oh, uh, we are. Yes. And how so? Uh, Why? All day. All day. If a bitch nigga is the dominant species now. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. So this nigga is all over TV. It's all look at Kanye, look at Lil Wayne, Drake, and Chris Brown. All these all these dudes make more money than, than God, okay? And they are all textbook bitch niggas. Okay. <laughs> well, I think manhood I th is played. Manhood is played out. I, I I think I think there are a lot of strong men, you know, being focused on too. There, there's Blair Underwood, you know. There's right. there's a you know there's I a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of men. I mean, right now pop, pop culture is focusing on on those guys. But just because yeah. pop culture because is focusing on them doesn't mean that there aren't a bunch yeah, and of then, good and men. Then, and they're not. And a lot of these guys are not in, that important in our home in defining. You know who we are. There's there's a lot of deans. There are a lot of teachers. You know there are a lot of men who are coaches who are dominating young men and helping them focus and be good men. Go ahead. Uh, you know, you're speaking from a dad who is present in his son's life. Okay, I'm telling you the way it really is because a lot of these boys don't have no daddy at home. Absolutely. Right. But and do they, they not have a daddy at home because? Let's not let's not just make a blanket statement. Do they not have a father at home because mother doesn't want him there? Because that exists in our community too. Mother well, yeah. actively deters him. Oh from yeah, being ran there. off some good. So we can't. That happens, but you a bitch, nigga. If you let her run you off. Woo! That's yes, what I'm sir. looking for. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. Go ahead, Jeff. I think uh, uh, one of the the chief things that is missing for young males is uh, the this this phrase. What the hell I look like doing that? Y'all don't have yeah. that, okay? If I call James and go, dude, I think I'm going to get some lime green skinny jeans. Are you coming with me? <laughs> He's going to go, nigga, what the hell I look like doing that? I got a son. You got sons. Get your shit together. And I go, you know what, yeah. James? You're right. Yeah. Young dudes don't have no magnetic north at all they just do all of this crazy shit and they don't have none of their boys to reel them back in but it doesn't seem to hurt them in getting women of this generation because women have lowered the vagina bar the vagina yeah. bar is way way too low shout out to sister brown across here who has her vagina bar at 30,000 feet <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's but too also, easy to get laid. But you know it what? Also, let me, let me say this really quickly and then I'm going to throw it to Ashley. What women in general fail to realize is sometimes the fantasy about who we are impedes your ability to really connect to us. And what I mean by that is this. Yeah, I'm looking at you like a dog herder. High noise. Princess Char Prince Charming is not real. He's not real. Every person you meet is complex. Every person you meet is ideologically in flux. Even though they may have standard beliefs that they have, ideas and concepts that they have, those beliefs are always being challenged. So people are always confused. I believe this now and then get it and then not really want it and then not know how to disconnect from, you know. So we got to women have to stop looking at us as being perfect with regards to how we fit into your idea of it. Date a real guy, a real man, not your idea. Go ahead, Ashley. No, I th agree with you. 
with that. But I also agree that you tend to attract what you are. For example, my female uh-huh. friends date guys who are low life losers who use them because they don't have any self worth and they don't believe that they deserve better. I meet quality guys all the time, but now I'm taken, so obviously I'm not giving out my number like that. But that's just my take on it. I got I I I like I a tip for women. What, this, uh, was going over these, this was going over these young girls today. What's Both going on with these young girls today? Gu- guys, he can't see us, so he jumps <laughs> in, all right? So he can't see us. That's why he keeps jumping in. Go ahead, James. <laughs> well, the problem is with these young girls these days is that too many of them are ratchet, and they want these big guys. They, pick, they purposely pick dudes who allow them to be ratchet instead of a dude that's going to really call them on their bullshit and keep them on the straight and narrow. So that's why a lot of these girls date, knowingly date bitch-ass niggas. Wow. Okay, you saying they're yeah. they're aware of the quality of the dude oh. and still oh, proceed? Yeah. Oh yeah, because the new, the new sister don't want to be told shit. So <laughs> to be with a man means that the cost of being with a man is once in a while he gonna say, "Baby, you wrong." Mm. You know he's supposed so, to. No, but the, the new chick don't like that. They don't they don't want that. They want to be. They think it's cool to be ratchet because they went to school and they got a good job. So that gives them grace to be as ratchet as they want to be, so they purposely pick dudes who don't who don't know how to value a woman and go let her be ratchet like that. It's like, yeah, let, me, got, well, let me do this. Doc, do, doesn't... Go back to your point about men and us not being true and lying. Don't... And this isn't just a black man issue. This is a male issue, right? Yeah, I think a lot of men are afraid of being exposed of, of all the stuff they don't know, and, and a lot of men are afraid of women because women have pretty good BS detectors, so one of the ways we keep women from detecting us is we act like idiots so that they're they're so appalled that they they don't get to expose what we don't want to have exposed which is many men really down deep don't know what they're talking about or what they're doing and and, and there's no honor amongst bsers and so men do that with each other but i have a dating tip i got a good dating tip give it to us okay, ashley uh, this is a cool thing uh a friend of mine uh, taught me this. This was a woman who was single into her 40s, and she was seeing some therapist who said, well, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's better to be alone than being in an unhappy relationship. Everyone's divorced. And this was genius what she came up with. She got really ticked off at the therapist, and what she did is she made a list of all the things that she would look for in a man that she'd want to spend her life with. Mm-hmm. And it's not rocket science. They'd have a sense of humor. They'd have confidence. They wouldn't have a chip on their shoulder. And so, but what was brilliant, she made this list of all the things so she'd recognize it. But then she made a list of all the things that such a good catch would want in a woman. Dang. And she changed things in herself yeah. because she said, what would it be if I got a good catch and then I would be totally insecure that he'd discover that I'm the lemon Mm-hmm. And wow. so, so all these things that she never liked about herself but never changed. She had like a cackly laugh. She could gossip and all this stuff. She changed them all. And within six months, she started becoming attractive because, you know, she got rid of all that stuff that she was self, doing. That's self-reflection. Yeah. Do you know how many people uh, are afraid to self-reflect? No, they go into the relationship thinking it's just going to work because right. I'm me. Right. You have to self-reflect. You have to take accountability and ownership of what you see coming back in those reflections. Right. Wow, I am argumentative. Wow, I am a poor listener. Wow, I want to be right all the time. Wow, I am controlling. If you assess those things and own those things and work on those things before you get into a relationship, it raises your relationship value and it also raises the potentiality of the relationship actually working Lewis Dix. Yeah, I, I, I agree with, okay. with Doc. I think it's so important that you, it's important for a male to be consistent. You really have to work on, you know, being consistent. And in doing that, you have to work on humbling yourself. Ah. And actually, uh, I found I fell in love with this uh, Psalm 118, 24. Mm-hmm. And it's just about honoring the day that you're in. And stop and don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow. And and if as men, if we can develop a consistency, even right. if you you it might be ignorant, you know, like James has a lot of consistent things. <laughs> yeah, James <laughs> that, that, got heat. Know, he got and, heat. And, and but at least once you know, you know, what it is, you can work through it. And we just can't keep changing, you know, our beliefs. Just be consistent. And that's one of the things that our fathers and grandfathers <laughs> had. They had a consistency about themselves that our mothers and grandmothers could trust. Come on, dude. You knew when you, if your uncle needed an hour to go to the bar to have a drink, but you knew he was coming home 
and you yep. knew that this he would talk he, to you that this is what and you stayed out of that way so there was a consistency we knew when our what time our dads was coming home and you knew to leave him alone for two hours and if right. and if his friend came over him and mr johnson you knew you'd go to the store for them you knew you had to bring them their change back before they gave you a tip exact change too so if, yes exact change <laughs> so if we if, if we can get our young men to to be more and that's one of the beauty beautiful things about sports is that it demands a consistency with young men and, and children. They have to be consistent. You have to be on time for practice. You have to work hard. You have to deal with the results, win or lose. So I, I think it's important that that's, we, we actually work on that. That's an excellent point. I always like to say relationship is a hospital for hurt hearts. Mm. When you go into one, it's not designed to be all cookies and cream right. and happiness and all of that. It is going to hurt you. And that hurt is the trauma you need to get to the other side of the bridge, which is forgiveness. That's how it has to work. 323-965-1600. We got to take a quick break. When we come back, final 15 minutes, we're going to go through all the guests and hosts and everybody. We're going to talk about it more. Call us, 323-965-1600. I'll be back in 2.2. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Zometheus Rising has returned. This is a great, great show. So what? And I know it's all over the place because this is a complex topic. And I like, I, I, I like the sidebars. You know, I like them because I think they're all subtopics and related to what the real issue is. And I think towards the end, we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what manhood means. You know, uh, James Hanna said something that stood out to me. If you let a, a woman run you off, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. You know, you got to stand. And what that means is stand for your child. Yes. Stand up and just say, you know, what, whatever you whatever you going through, I'm going to be here. Whatever you could throw at me, I'm going to catch it and, and discard it. But I'm only doing that because I need him to see me doing that woman. You understand? So I think that's good. But I do believe that the black man gets beat up a lot in this society. The image of it. And then I think also there's propaganda behind what I perceive to be the new black male image. You know, a lot of black men took umbrage 
with uh, President Obama. They feel like he's too much of an apologist. They feel like he, he, you know, takes too much stuff. But then a lot of other black men say, nah, that's class. So, again, my question to you is, how do we, as strong black men, intelligent black men, recapture this generation? You know, you have some kids talking about Kanye wearing a kilt, and that's gay. That wasn't a kilt. What was it? It was a skirt. Was it an actual skirt, or was it a Scottish kilt? It was a kilt. That nigga ain't Scottish. Scottish. He ain't well, Scottish. Well, the original blacks were Scottish. Scottish people wearing dashikis. Yeah. Thank you. You don't see black people wearing dashikis. So what does that mean? Does that mean? But what I'm saying is I think hip hop is responsible for this, too. The the erosion of the black male image because hip hop is a misogynistic art form. Hip hop really breaks down the woman. It doesn't build her up. We do have good examples of hip hop, whereas uh, common Talib Kweli, you know, uh, I was about to uh, say that's unfair. To say. Most de- it isn't unfair to say because those artists are the minority. If we look at the majority of artists out there, they're not talking about nothing. And remember, the music and the media that is a uh, uh, life one hundred and one for most people. Most people are being educated by low grade content. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Hip hop is misogynistic now. It is yeah. not. I, I think it's unfair to say that it, that that is what it is. Hip hop is a microcosm of the rest of black society. It has become this ugly thing. That, right. That We're I don't saying recognize. the same thing. No, 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 yeah, we I, are. I, I'm, I don't uh, think it's, hip hop. Hip hop is gay as a child of Perry pool party. Okay, it's, that's what <sighs> it is right now. <laughs> Before we close, I I, got to say something about the guy because one of the terms we've thrown around here is the alpha male, and so for you women, uh, I think the 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 good alpha male that you should go after that's the man who stands up for something, Mm. whereas the bad alpha male is some uh, is the male who takes everything personally and say I'm not going to stand for that. So look for the good alpha male who will stand for something, fight for it. It's important, and it's not all about you know their personal ego. The bad one is the ones who gets all angry and all that. That's not alpha. That's that's just being a child. Good point. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. whoa. I got, I got. Shit, I have moments of that too. Can I take hey. a little umbrage with that? You can take a lot. Okay, yeah. you can take a lot. In there, the dog there state. is a. I don't know what you do with your anger, but there are a lot of things that are well worth. My anger as a man and as a black man, absolutely. No, because you're, no, but you're standing up for you know the respect that you deserve. I'm saying a lot of a lot of alpha males take it's all personal and it ain't about being a black thing. They're just they're being called on their crap and they, and they don't like someone calling. Oh, okay, them. I get that. Exactly. Speaking of that, Louis Dix, I say one of my things of the alpha male is the one who would um, when you're having a draft of some kids for a basketball league. Mm. The alpha alpha male is the one who takes all the kids who were not drafted. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And he coaches them. Mm-hmm. Right. And he coaches them to greatness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Or just to, to where it. The, let them know that, that you're they important matter. too. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a Disney movie. Call uh, me. Let's write that. James. James. <laughs> James. This is Zoe. You, you, okay. We have five minutes left. You said you wanted to speak about something uh, in particular when you called. What was that? Oh no, man! It's just this uh, this cat, this blogger, Tommy Sotomayor. Uh-huh. I don't know if y'all know him. I, I don't know him personally, but I uh, I've been asked to have him on the show. I would love to have him on the show. What's the problem? What's going on? Man, me and him got into it on Facebook, and that nigga deleted all my comments because I got in his ass. That bitch ass. That's all. <laughs> oh God! I, 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 I called don't... him on his bu- I called him on his bullshit because he's he's missed the controversy. And then the nigga deleted all my comments while I told him the truth about himself. That's he didn't like that, but he oh. liked dogging women all the time and making fun of dark skinned women and he oh, dark skinned. No. Team dark skinned. We need to have a topic here. about that. We <laughs> should. We should. We and we will. Let me do this really quickly. Uh, People, grown I got men having fights let me, on let, Facebook. Let me do this really exactly. quickly. <laughs> I, I gotta. I gotta say thanks. To Jay Nasty, we had some. Uh, we we lost you. Uh, Chuck Doe hung up on you a couple times. <laughs> sorry about that, and I'm sorry we couldn't get to your call. It's just that uh, this topic was all over the place. It was heated. It was fiery. 
So, uh, brother, please call in later. Maybe I'll call you after the show is over. Yeah, shout out to Jay Nasty. Jay Nasty, I, 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 man. I, like, I appreciate I like Jay Nasty. Jay Nasty. I've, I've grown to yes. like Jay Nasty. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> and, and, and my homegirl, uh, uh, she's she's a new fan of the show. Her name on Twitter, Ass is Ridic. That's the homegirl. I don't know what it is. Now, why would I even want to... <laughs> You know what? Debate or, or connect with someone with that hey, Twitter that, name. That, that but you know what I'm saying? It starts, it's just I'm nasty. just saying. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm ass at, is... At, ass. at ass is ridiculous. Hey, I'm sure her yeah. grandmother really loves going on that Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. let, let me do this really quickly. Let me just say. Black men have to mentor other black men. Yes. yes. The only way you can mentor... One of my favorite philosophers, Krishnamurti, said, whenever you have a teacher in front of students who hasn't confronted himself, he is a danger to the pupils. Mm. Yeah. Damn. So now, oh, yep. oh. so now, at the end of the fucking day, until black men stand up and face our own demons, our entire community is in danger. It, we can raise alpha men if we first acknowledge that most of us are betas and below. Good job. Just because you got a good job and a good education doesn't make you alpha. An alpha is spiritually aware and conscious of the content of his character. And he knows that he's responsible for his weaknesses. Now, women, good men have bad qualities. And just because the relationship forces them to show those bad qualities doesn't give you the right to throw good men away. Right. Do you understand? I'm just trying to put my jewels in, damn it. I done let you run wild. Flip it around. I done let you run wild now. Shit. Go ahead. Just go ahead. What about the bad? That, that, yeah, they, keep, they, they, they misconstrue good men with bad qualities with bad men. With good qualities, yeah. and y'all—that's what y'all wind up with about bad, bad, horrible motherfucker. I'm that gonna, happens to open the door for you, right? And I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, and, and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, just because a guy, really, that's what you're doing, Doc. Doc didn't already <laughs> planned his escape. Doc trying to get out of the hood. <laughs> right. <laughs> how do I get? <laughs> how do I keep my car and get out of this area? <laughs> so listen, I'm done with that. Hey, James Hanna, tell them where they can find you, man. Uh, on Facebook under James Hanna's Truth Pace, and I'll be moving to moving to the East Coast. To I got a new job writing for the WWE. Wow! So, Congratulations, yeah. man. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. Wow, that's right. Good stuff. Yeah. Congratulations. Lewis Dix, where can they find uh, you, brother? At L E W D I X. And uh and yeah, I'm on Facebook too. Uh you uh, just quiet Dix. right now. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I've had a great time. Thank you for the invite. Dr. Thank Mark Goulston, our voice of reason, as always, I appreciate you. Please go get real influence and just listen. These are two heavy books. From a heavy brother, I appreciate you every week for coming here and believing in uh, what we're doing, and I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, well, yeah. Can I please take one second to apologize to the young lady? Yeah, for uh, going, uh, in. Please. Thank going you. hard. And yeah, talking. thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to just take a second to apologize to you because that's my style of comedy is shock and awe. <laughs> and, uh, you did that. <laughs> yeah. You did that. That's how I do. So all right. I don't want you to walk away thinking I don't respect it. No, I didn't I think that at all. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So. And there okay. it is. Uh, Jeff Brown, where can I find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Jeff Brown Comedian. I will be putting up links to new ringtones and coming soon. Uh oh. The, oh. the lost tapes of performances by your favorite superstars. They will be right here. Great stuff, great stuff. Ashley Brown 100, where can they see you, find you, and connect? Check me out on YouTube, Ashley Brown 100, and on Twitter, Ashley Brown 100. She was great. I loved her. Check this out. Follow Zoe Williams. All you got to do is text ZO to 90210. That's it. Follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams. Also, anybody on Instagram? Somebody hook up with me on Instagram. I'm at... Z-O-S-E-R Williams at Z-O-S-E-R Williams follow me let's continue the conversation that's what it's designed for to piss you off and get you started <laughs> we about to roll out I'll see y'all next week holla okay.